you were with us when I started the solo program. I, I think I called it peak yes. performers back then. You were one of the original founding members and were with us for a little while back then and then came back a few months ago. And so what I always like to start with, just to relate to the audience, when you enrolled, what were the things you wanted for yourself, personally, mostly professionally, and then map out some of the ways you implemented the ways, especially like, I, I know you got a bunch of retainers in the last couple of months. Yeah. You know, here's the thing, Mike, and I tell people this all the time, we're already successful in our own way, shape, or form, and I've been successful uh, in this business and in it for 16, almost 17 years, but uh, I was listening in on the call a few minutes ago to what, uh, and I heard Ben Davis say, we get in our own head, and we do, we get into our own forest and we get stuck in there and we have all this great knowledge but sometimes we can't navigate out and that's where I found myself needing some accountability as a Stephen Covey would say you know keep the sharpen the saw I need to sharpen resharpen my saw or my axe I just wasn't gaining the ground that I needed to gain and I had to first admit to myself that I wasn't gaining the ground and I was just, you know, chasing my tail. And I went through two or three years of shiny object syndrome and going down the rabbit hole on some things and, and thinking I could get out of it. And I finally just had to grab the bull by the horns, as they say, and, and make the move. That's without getting into a lot of other minutia and whatever, but that's what spurred me on. I just, I had to be willing to make the sacrifice and check my ego at the door and say, okay, Mike, you've been great. You've been successful, but it's time to bring some other folks back in. And we've had good success. I've been using 28.6% of the target comp for 10 years, very successfully. I've only had one person ever say, how did you get to 28.6%? Give that technique to everybody and the psychology behind it. I love uh, hearing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so, it's just fantastic. It's been worth its weight in gold right there. And to this day, I get so frustrated with companies that say, the method of the madness for everybody, just so you know, is nobody argues with 28.6%. They've figured, they've just assumed that where your margins are. And you can run the numbers and the calculations and know where your margins are, but people don't argue with it. And when you have an uneven number other than 20 or 25, people are rarely coming down. So if, if you're negotiating on an agreement with somebody and you say, my fee's 20%, they're going to, the, the, the company is going to come back and say, we typically do 20%. That's 5% cut right there. And that adds up in surges. But if you say my fee's 28.6% and they say, gosh, we normally do 20, 25, you can say, I'll tell you what, we could do 26 and you're still ahead of the game, but they never come back and ask you to cut it by 5% or 8% for that matter. I've, I, and to this day, I don't think for the last 10 years, I've pretty sure I don't think we've ever done anything less than 25% ever on, with a client. Uh, now we do some different types of project-based recruiting and so forth, but it's still at that 28.6%. Works great. And it's, it's I psychology. An, I remember where I got that from. I read an article on the power of very specific numbers. And I forgot where I read the article and I don't think I even have the article anymore. And it talked about, it wasn't even talking about the recruiting industry. It was just talking about using, quoting and making proposals and putting like pennies in it, even if it was like a hundred thousand dollar proposal to have it like 101, 131 and 13 cents. Because to, to Mike's point is, wow, these guys really put some work into it. And every once in a while, like you said, you only heard it once. I would hear it once in a while, like, where the heck did you come up with 28.6? And this was true. I said, we track our metrics internally and we know the amount of effort it takes real, to find really good talent because we're not going to compromise just on finding and identify three individuals. We want to find the three right individuals. We've got to go through 80 people and we've got to, with up to some of those, we contact them up to seven times. 
And based on that, based on the overhead of the office, what I, what our what our account team makes and a fair margin, we came up with 28.6. Oh, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And it's all accurate because that's true, exactly right? what, what you do. And I will say one last thing that I've done some big projects, 40, 50 people in three or four months. And these are two, 300, $500,000 projects. And every time I made a proposal, it was ne it never had a five or a zero in it ever. They all ended in 600, whatever is so the last three digits were 647, 75 cents or whatever it was. And rarely did I get any pushback ever, a very specific number in there. And sometimes you're pulling a little bit of it out of the sky, but People, they just, to your point, Mike, they just, okay, they put some time and energy into trying to figure this out. And then where you've taken this to another level the next last few months is one, yeah. getting money up front and working at the C-suite with a couple of things. Yeah, I'm, oh. my firm's always been retainer and I'm a rare bird. I always try to get at least 20 or 30% up front on a search. And there's some specific things I, I do there, but I want to... I got to give Francis Walker a shout out. In fact, I got a referral for you, Francis, and we got to talk offline real quick at some point. But I've always been a firm believer in mindset and your subconscious is, affects how you operate and so forth. And I've taught my kids all of that. But I get every single day I come in the office for the last month or two since we've gone through this is I do my little belief in myself exercise every single day. And um, it's been a huge game changer for me. I, I know this sounds absolutely psychotic, but 17 years in the business and you still get, gosh, do I really want to make these calls? I don't want to bother these people, yada, yada, yada. And you, you start believing that you're interrupting people's schedules or whatever. And that's been a huge piece for me. The other adjustments that I wanted to mention is starting with the end of mind. Again, Stephen Covey always says start with the end of mind, which is really great. He teaches how to do that with our numbers, figuring out what our numbers need to be, where we're going to be at the end of the year or what have you based on the numbers. That alone right there between the mindset and focusing on those numbers that we figure out that, you know, that one particular uh, specific number that we need to, re to achieve at the end of the year has enabled me to come in and focus massively on my day-to-day -day, and it's been very helpful. So I appreciate that. So there's, those are some big adjustments for me last few months. I know you've done retainers, but a couple tips you could give people on, you can't teach retainers in five minutes. You can't even teach retainers effectively in an hour, but mm -hmm. a couple quick tips, both from, a, from your approach and from a mindset standpoint that could help these folks increase the likelihood of getting money up front? One of the things that I communicate to my prospective clients about retainers is brand image. Most HR people or whoever you're talking to do not want to manage 10 or 5, 5 10, 15, 20 recruiters on a project. But more importantly, back to brand image, do you really want, if your brand is super important to you, which in all cases it is, do you want a whole bunch of recruiters out there potentially muddying your brand. And I talk a lot about that and I get into some details with uh, prospective clients about that piece. But the other side of it, the coin for us is that we are completely, now some people don't like this, but we are completely dedicated to that client and we will we'll do what we have to do to get that search project done as efficiently as possible. And clients aren't hiring us for a 30, 40, 70, $80,000 search because uh, they have three or four months to, to fill a role. They're usually calling us because their talent acquisition team or their HR team has been un unsuccessful. And now they're behind the eight ball trying to get something filled. And if you really want it filled quickly and efficiently, ideally you need to retain us for that search. The last thing I'll mention is when you're asking for money up front, what I tell my clients, and I just, I'm pretty, pretty much in their face. I just say, look, I don't need your 12,000 or whatever dot engaged in the search. What I need is your commitment 
in this search process because we're going to spend substantially more than whatever you're giving us in a deposit on this project. And we need to know that when we're ready to present candidates, you guys are ready to go. And we kind of work through that stuff. One thing I used to say something similar, Mike. And the other thing I would say is this is going to be a, a $30,000 fee and I'm getting 12,000 up front. Do you think it's profitable if I don't fill the back end? <laughs> Otherwise, I'm working on 90% margins. And as a firm, we don't work on like we're 70 or 80% margins. And they're like, oh, mm-hmm. and they'll say, because just like the 28.6, it makes a rational argument. If you think I'm going to jump on the jump on a plane and go to the Bahamas with your 12 grand, one, I wouldn't still be in business, number one. And number two is the margin is in the fulfillment. <laughs> the margin right. is in the fulfillment. Yeah, that's a very good point. And there's some other things. If you know you're going to lose it, there's some other things you can say, but that's for another call. And as you say, retainers take a couple hours to teach. Because it's a pro, there is no pitch. Like you have some elements, but there's a lot of digging. Uh, Kathleen's going to cover some of that tomorrow uh, in in her session. Um, But it's a process of uncovering pain uh, because there's a term, a guy named Rob Mosley taught me 20 something years ago. Prescription without diagnosis is malpractice. Right. Right. Taking a job, taking a job or, or telling them how you're going to solve their problem, what your fees are before you fully identified what their problem is and how you're going to solve it uh, is you, imagine walking to a doctor's office and you, you say, oh my gosh, my, my lower part of my uh, below my belly is hurting. And the doctor says, well, let's prep you for surgery. And you're like, don't you want to do an MRI? Don't you want to do a little blood work? Don't you want to even put your hand over there and see if it's what it really is. No, I've done this a hundred times. I'm just, it's your appendix. You need surgery. And that's what we do as recruiters. What do you know? You're looking probably what, three to five years. You probably need this X, Y, Z technical thing, this ABC. Yep. Yep. I need those. I need those. And we actually, some recruiters, the more longer you're in the business tend to dictate job orders back to their clients and just look for confirmations. Any parting tips or comments you can give? I would say that the metrics piece is uh, a huge component of the success that I've had just in the last few months, we've um, I jotted some numbers down. We have about 110 coming in just in the last four weeks, five weeks, with about 212 in pending retained searches. We're going to end up with um, you know, tripling what we did, at least the, over the next quarter or two, than what we did last year. So that's really strong. But the metrics piece is, is really fantastic. And it drives everything now. And the cool thing about it, and you guys have talked about this while I was listening in, you're talking about resources and adding additional people to your organization. Uh, You know, I've known about this for many years, but I really have never taken the leap to do it. And now with the numbers and the metrics, I can, as you say, Mike, give myself permission to make some hires, even if they're part-time. I've just, in the last month and a half, I've hired two people to work in part-time capacities, but it's freeing me up by 15 or 20 hours a week, just in researching and all that other stuff that we get bogged down in doing. It's been uh, it's very strong so far. Excellent. Thank you so much. I appreciate mm-hmm. your insights and thanks for your participation participation today, Mike. It's great. And again, great to see you again. It's to great you. to have somebody. When, when Mike joined 10 years ago, it was me. <laughs> I was the company. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was the company. And so I'm, you're probably having a different experience than you had 10 years ago. I am. I am. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. 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 Excellent.